Today I'm going to do a guide on how to set up a Raspberry Pi to be headless, which means it has no display connected to it, and then how to run a Minecraft server on that. The Minecraft server will be able to restart itself when and if it crashes. Now, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM, just so you know what I'm using. You'll want to open the Raspberry Pi imager. Right here where it says choose OS. Uh, since I'm using the 8 gig Pi, I'm going to need the 64 bit OS so I can allocate more than 4 gigs of RAM to the Minecraft server. And then choose storage, you'll do whatever SD card you're doing. And then you'll hit right and click yes. This will overwrite anything on the SD card. Okay, now after that's done, you'll want to go to the boot partition and then you'll create a document and you'll just name it SSH with no uh, file extension, just empty. If you're using Wi-Fi, you'll want to put a file named wpasupplicant.conf in here, and it should look something like this. Uh, if you're on Windows, uh, for the WPA supplicant, you'll need to have Notepad++ or something, and you'll need to change your line endings to Unix line endings, or this won't work. Now just eject the SD card and you can go put it in the Pi, powered on, connect it to the internet, and then I will return after I finish that. Okay, now I'm just going to pull up the uh, config for my router and I can find my Raspberry Pi and see its IP address. So we could also reserve its IP so that it would stay the same. I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm, I don't plan to leave this set up, but you probably will want to set its IP to be static. Now, you'll want to open a terminal. If you're on Windows, before you do this, you'll want to go into the search bar uh, for in your start menu, type turn on features, and then go into that application it'll pull up a menu and you'll want to look for something called ssh or open ssh and you'll want to enable that feature after you've done that you'll just go open a terminal you'll type ssh and then pi and then the at symbol and then whatever ip that you found in your router configuration then you'll hit enter you'll want to type a yes here and then the default password is raspberry now to change that You'll just type passwd, type in the current password, then a new password. Okay, now I've changed my password. Okay, now we know we can SSH into the Pi. So you can minimize this or close out of it. For right now, it doesn't matter. All right, now I'm just going to run the server on my computer to set it up. Okay, we can set the ULA and then you can set up the server properties. I recommend setting, I recommend setting up Archon. All right, and whatever other server configurations you need in there. And then just run it another time and let it generate a world. It'll probably be faster on your computer than on the Pi. Okay, so I've gone and grabbed the Fabric installer because uh, if we just run default vanilla, it will run and work, but the mobs, they kind of walk around and they're laggy and then breaking blocks is a bit laggy. It's not pleasant to play on, although it is playable. So we'll install Fabric and then Lithium and then it's super playable. You wouldn't even you wouldn't even notice it's on a pie. So you'll just run through and you'll run the fabric installer like you do with the uh, server. And then you'll just hit server here. Hit install. Use this command to launch the server or generate a launch script. We'll just generate one since we're gonna need a launch script anyways. All right, then hit done. Okay, now open with. Okay, now I'm just going to change this to bin bash and then I'm going to do cd and then we'll just do slash home slash pi slash mc server because that's where I'm going to store this and we're going to need this to make it a system uh, make it work with the system script because otherwise it generates the eula and stuff in the root directory and it doesn't use this stuff or this will just make that work 
and then java jar fabric server launch dot jar you'll probably want to add the ram arguments we'll just do xmx and we'll do 5000 capital m uh, that needs to not have a space no space there okay and then we'll also add no gui here at the end and that should be able to stay like that file save i will do i will try to launch the uh, fabric server launch to make sure it's it's working properly okay now we'll just kill this and we can take a look at this server.jar equals server jar yep so our i'll just get rid of that installer since we don't need it and then now there's a mods folder generated so you're going to want to go to curse forge and download lithium okay i've downloaded it put it in the mods folder uh lithium is right here um you'll probably want to launch it again to make sure that it's working we're good now so we'll stop that it had no errors so we're we're good to go just wait for this to kill and we'll move it over to the pi so if you copied what i put in here exactly so it's home pi mc server you'll go up one directory you want to make sure this file is named mc server then you'll open your terminal so you'll type scp then dash r and you'll type mc server now you'll type pi at and then whatever its ip was and then you'll do colon and you'll do slash home slash pi and you'll hit enter it'll ask you for the password you set now you'll do ssh and then pi at whatever ip it's at and then type in your password okay now if we do ls you can see the mc server is right here now so if we cd into it and ls uh you can see all of the stuff that's supposed to be there okay now you'll type sudo nano that slash etc slash system d slash system slash mc dash server dot service then you'll hit enter now you'll want to copy and paste this into there I'll leave this in the description. Then make sure restart is always and then exit start. Uh, where it says absolute path to your target, you'll replace this. You'll do slash home slash pi slash mc server and slash start dot sh. Then you'll hit control x, y, and then enter. Okay, and now we've got everything set up to work. Now we need to install. Uh, Java. Okay, now we'll need to install Java. For me, since Java 16 doesn't appear to be in the official packages for Raspberry Pi right now, this will be a bit of a workaround. If you do this in the future or with a version of Minecraft that doesn't require a newer version of Java, this will be easier. You can just apt install and then whatever Java version. Okay, now that we've got Java installed, you can do sudo systemctl. If you type start here, this will start at once during this boot. If you type enable, this will set it to start every time the Pi starts. I'm just going to do start and then we'll do mc-server. Now, if you replace start with status, you can see that it's active and it's running right now. Now, if you do stop here, it will stop the server. Now, I can just exit this. Okay, now multiplayer. Now, whatever, set the IP to uh, whatever the Pi's IP is. Okay, it should be working now. There we go, it just took a while to start. Okay, it took a minute to warm up. Things are, blocks are nice and responsive. They break right away. Wish there was a way, an easy way for me to simulate a crash so I could show that it restarts. I'm not sure that there is. All right, yeah, if you do this without uh, lithium, the mobs would probably be jittering around and laggy and the block breaking 
be like it was when I first started and it wasn't like loaded all the way where it would take a while for them to drop but with lithium and with a 64-bit install so we can use enough RAM um, it's super playable now I'm not going to uh, show you how to do mod packs or anything but I have run mod packs on the Pi, uh, and they've been pretty playable as long as they're fabric based mod packs uh, the big forge based mod packs uh, they, they're not going to run as well so they will run just not what I would consider playable because like breaking these blocks takes a while after they break before they drop and I don't I don't like playing when it's like that it's kind of frustrating <laughs> but as long as you keep it to fabric based mod packs um and you stay within your RAM limit, you should be pretty fine. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like the video if you thought this was helpful and you liked it. Subscribe if you want me to keep making content like this or for more kind of tech related content. And I will see you later.